Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So during my City of Blood video, I asked you to submit all your biggest questions about the episode and the rest of the season, so I picked 10 of them to answer in this video with one bonus question. It looks like the Starling City Weather Service is predicting fire tornadoes with a heavy chance of apocalypse. If you're finding me for the first time, I typically do Q&A videos like this just so I can feature, you know, fun comments that you guys leave that I think are really awesome. It's also a good opportunity to follow up on big, you know, WTF things that happen during the week. So be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'm even doing a bunch of Spider-Man stuff tomorrow morning. So time for questions. Careful for spoilers from episode 21 if you haven't seen it yet, but here we go. Number one, Sventu Sventu asks, what do you think that Oliver will call the new foundry? So I'm hoping that he'll call it the Arrow Cave in a twist of what his reaction to Felicity calling it the Arrow Cave was earlier, you know, whenever Roy joined. Remember, he was all like, we don't call it that. I'd really like for him to have a moment where he caves, you know, sorry for the wordplay, and just calls it the new Arrow Cave. The thing about the show is that Oliver is always the straight man. That's a comedy term. In a comedy sketch, you know, you have like two or more people. There'll always be one person who's not in on the joke and they'll just react to other people being silly. Saturday Night Live does it all the time. On Arrow, that straight person is Oliver. He's always reacting to Felicity being really silly. So I think it'd be a nice twist if he did something really silly and Felicity reacted to him. So thus, I really want to see him call it the new Arrow Cave. Question number two, Kofi asks. Do you think that Merlin will take Thea under his wing and save her? He'll definitely rescue her, but because I don't think that Willa Holland is leaving the show, I don't think she's going to go with him. In order to get that Merlin, Thea, Artemis storyline, she'd have to go away, because John Barrowman isn't coming back to the show full time. So you'd have to have Willa leave the show in the way that Barry Allen left the show to go back to Central City. I think that Willa is still going to be on the show full time in season 3, so she's probably not going to go with him. That doesn't mean that Merlin is going to die or that he's not going to come back in season 3, but characters are always way more interesting when they're haunted by evil parents. And now that Moira is dead and, you know, that evil parent is gone, Merlin is basically going to step in and fill that role. I do totally think that Merlin's going to pop in at least once or twice next season, or at least be referenced in conversation. Laurel always references Tommy whenever she's talking to Oliver, so why wouldn't Thea always reference Malcolm, you know, in the future whenever she talks to Oliver? Question number three. Austin asks, do you think that Nyssa will die in the finale and that will cause Ra's al Ghul to unleash on Starling City? No, I think Katrina Law is too precious of an actress for them to get rid of. She's like the best representation that they have of the League, Raish, and Talia that they would get, you know, without having to deal with all those complicated continuity issues. That's why you don't see more characters jumping from show to show. Even Marvel only does it a little bit, so anytime they want to use the League as a story device, they can just bring her back. As for her relationship with Oliver and Starling City, we'll have to wait and see what ends up happening in the finale, but essentially, you know, she doesn't hate Oliver, she just treats him like you would treat someone who's dating your ex, you know, with a lot of contempt. I do think that she understands what Oliver's trying to do and accepts it, so they're not enemies flat out, they're more like frenemies. I do like the idea of Oliver creating his own enemies like the Huntress and Slade, although the Huntress really wasn't his enemy. Slade, you could say, is more of an enemy of circumstance too. The only reason he's doing this is because of the Mirakuru, so once they cure him, his entire motivation is going to be gone. I do think there will be another villain at some point that Oliver will be directly responsible for creating. Remember back to the Michael Keaton Batman and his relationship with the Jack Nicholson Joker. You know, Joker kills parents, creates Batman, Batman dumps Joker in vat of chemicals, you know, Joker goes crazy on the city. Question number four, Oliver Queen asks, do you think that Brother Blood will have a change of heart before the finale? Yeah, whenever Oliver was sitting down at dinner with him and made him face facts about Slate, there was like a moment of hesitation on his face. But all that being considered, I think he's committed himself to the cause. You know, he's basically drinking his own Mirakuru Kool-Aid. Remember that shot of Laurel with the bow from next week's episode? I think that she is going to have the pleasure of killing him. I don't care how she does it, but if she did kill him with that bow, it would be pretty freaking sweet. I think if any of the villains end up dying this season, he's going to be the one. Laurel has gotten pretty dark. She's broken the law, wiretapping him without a warrant used extortion to get her job back, and I totally think that she's willing to kill him to save Oliver and the rest of Team Arrow. I also think whatever she does in these last two episodes to help save Oliver and Team Arrow is going to inform her character in Season 3. It's going to be part of her major arc. Question number 5. Sour Rooster asks, If Sarah dies, do you think that Nyssa would become the Season 3 villain? No, I don't think that's the case, but if Sarah does end up dying, I do think that Nyssa will flip out and kill a bunch of people, probably mostly Mirakuru soldiers. I don't think that she would hold Sarah's death against Oliver. She wouldn't waste her time on him. The League is from Nanda Parbat, but they are an international organization with operations going on all over the planet. So Starling City is like a speck of dust in their grand design. 
I would like to see her fight Slade though, because she and Oliver were essentially an even match, so she would do at least as good against Slade as Oliver did. Which I guess isn't saying a lot, because every time Oliver's fought him, he's got his butt kicked. Question number six, Macho Man asks, Did you see that T statue in Brother Blood's office? How soon could a Teen Titans spinoff occur and who would be the villain? So right now they're just trying to get the Flash show ordered to series. We'll know in about two weeks whether or not that's going to happen, you know, by the middle of May. There's like a 99% chance that it's going to happen based on what people inside the CW have been saying. If the Flash TV show ends up being really successful, then they'll start targeting new shows to develop. Right now, I think there's a much better chance of Suicide Squad becoming the next show after The Flash, just because they spent so much time on Arrow developing those characters, and Arrow itself does not depend on those characters being present. So like Teen Titans would mean they'd have to get rid of Roy and Thea or anyone else that they use. I don't see the show getting rid of Willa Holland or Colton Haynes anytime soon. So no Teen Titans for the foreseeable future. That doesn't mean it'll never happen, you know, never say never, but probably Suicide Squad would be the next one. Question number seven, Pastor Will asks, what do you think he meant when Oliver said they started with just those three and they needed to get back to that? So I think he was talking more about the finale. I think in the end it's going to be just those three against Slade. I don't think that Ravager and Brother Blood are going to make it to that very final fight, you know, like the last fight. Question number eight, Eric Jaffa asks, who do you think Isabel Roshev is hallucinating since she's full of Mirakuru now too? So that's actually a really good question. It seems like usually most people end up hallucinating people they either had sexual relationships with or had sexual feelings for in the case of Slade. In the case of Isabel though, I think she's actually hallucinating Diggle just because he's the one that visited her final trauma on her, as in killed her. And it seems like her main goal right now is to just get revenge for that. The really interesting thing about Isabel's character as well as Brother Blood is that they essentially have what they want. You know, he was promised the city, she was promised Queen Industries, and so now they're basically just along for the ride. It's kind of like they won the lottery and now they're just trying to figure out what to spend all the cash on. So I do think that we'll see some moments of hesitation on both their faces before the finale. Question number nine, Jerry Chan asks, do you think that Laurel could become Artemis instead of Black Canary? I totally think that's a possibility. That would actually be pretty awesome, but I think that's a character arc that would have to wait for season three. She's definitely gonna be a more active member of Team Arrow next season, but I think most of her time will be spent in a support role like Felicity. She'll probably train just because she seems less physically awkward than Felicity, but she'll never be as vicious as Sarah. What I'm really hoping is, is that Sarah does survive the finale and ends up, you know, going back to the league with Nyssa, but that she and Oliver kind of share some responsibility in training Laurel. We probably won't see a lot of that on screen, but I am expecting us to get at least a few, you know, bow training scenes with Oliver and Laurel next season. I definitely think that Team Arrow needs more girl power to just uh, balance out all the dudes. It's turning into a bit of a sausage fest right now, and as much as Felicity is Oliver's conscience, Laurel is more of an equal, you know, not so much in a physical sense, but in that she wields as much authority as his character. I think that Laurel kind of exists in the middle of that spectrum between, you know, super brainy and super strong, so we'll probably see a little bit of both from her next season. Question number 10, Jonah asks, do you think the Suicide Squad will help deal with the Mirakuru army? Yeah, there is no way that Team Arrow is going to be able to get all those people by themselves. The image we saw of Nyssa in the finale implies that the League won't be back until that episode, episode 23, which means Oliver is going to have to get more help next week in episode 22. And we were literally just at Argus in the last episode, so I totally expect her to come back. And one last bonus question, JY9012 asks, is Roy coming back in the next episode and will he be cured? So Frankenstein has to wake up at some point and I mean, I feel like they've been teasing it enough. I think once they get the cure from Star Labs, they'll fix Roy first and then figure out how to deliver it to the rest of those soldiers. I know a lot of you have also been asking me about Roy's, you know, official suit, like his red arsenal suit. And Stephen Amell did make some comments earlier this year at a convention where he said that there would be another, you know, superhero getting a suit on the show. But I think based on recent developments, he was talking about Ravager. In order for Roy to get a suit, Oliver would have to make it. And right now he's underneath a pile of concrete trapped with a bunch of super soldiers. So he's not going to be sewing any red leather pants anytime soon. So thank you so much for submitting bonus questions. These are always a ton of fun to do. And remember, there's only two more episodes left. My next bonus video will post before episode 22 airs, you know, next Wednesday. Be sure to subscribe to get it. And feel free to leave me suggestions for what you want those other bonus videos to be about. So right now, click here to get my review of the episode and click here to learn all about the new Justice League movie they just announced. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. High fives.